Welcome back to Rational Funk, a drum instruction uh, video series uh, that focuses on drum instruction and life instruction. When I say that, sometimes my brain just floats away from the drums and I go, oh, life instruction as well. But why do they have to be separate? Why? That's the whole point of this show is the idea that these are applicable conversations. We're not gonna, we're not gonna call them lessons because everybody, man, come on, who, who teaches who? Every, it's Montessori system. Everybody teaches everybody. There's no reason to sit there and go like Joe and I are teaching drum instruction and life instruction. We're basically pointing out the, the connection between the two worlds. And um, one of those um, uh, worlds that people have to deal with all the time in drumming is memorization. Music in general. The idea that you memorize the song you're playing or you memorize a sort of path that you're gonna take down um, from composition to composition. Like, oh, okay, I remember, you know, I know in, in my work especially, like I, I, I rarely use charts on stage. It has nothing to do with, you know, like, oh, check it out, I memorized it. It's much more like a chart could be a barrier. You know, you could, you could, you could, you could use the argument that, like, you, you know, you go see like Radiohead and they come out on stage and they're like this. Thank you very much. Play that song about an alien. Okay. <laughs> Hang out. And they're sifting through their charts. Play the song where the alien is taking your spiritual life force, and they're in the government. Okay. Hang on a second. Everybody, hang on a second. Let's so let's shoot. Over. Play the one that's about the alien that is really wants to get back to its home planet, but it's trapped and it's also artificial. It's 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 made by like a government agency. We're getting there. <laughs> if you could just give us a minute to look through our charts, right away you see the problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? People are on. They're in the audience going like this. What the fuck? This is Radiohead. I want to see some fucked up lights. I want to see some up shit. I want to see some ear monitor cords that look like fucking Princess Leia's hair. And I want to fucking hear some fucked up shit about how there's a cocoon around us of darkness that only Radiohead sees and that we need to fucking wake the fuck up. And I want them to do it without charts. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Memorization is difficult. You know what I mean? Who holds the, who is the, just name a trivial fact, Joe, that I might remember. Name a trivial fact, anything. Okay, who played Monroe, the neighbor guy on Too Close for Comfort, the great show with Ted Knight, one of the great geniuses of all time. Am I right, Joe? Yeah. Who played the neighbor? Jim J. Bullock. And then you're thinking to myself, did he say Jim or Jim? I said Jim because his name is J.M. J. Bullock. Okay? Name another. Go ahead. I memorized that. Okay? I memorized it correctly too. I could have said Jim J. Bullock and that would have been no. Guaranteed there was a Jim J. Bullock in the Actors Guild. You know, that's how they do that. That's why people think of Michael J. Fox. You know that, right, Joe? Yeah. Michael J. Fox. His name's Michael Fox, okay? He wasn't growing up going, my name's Michael J. Fox. He wasn't like 12 in the Cub Scout meeting going, and who are you at the Pinewood Derby? Who are you? I'm Michael J. Fox and my car, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not the Cubs, he's not the wee below arrow of light ceremony. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, he's getting his arrow of light from the wee below. Talk about a dark art society, the Cub Scouts. Holy shit, they make the Illuminati look like a fucking Welcome back. We're talking about Michael Fox. Perhaps you've heard of him. He was in a little film called Back to the Future. His name's Michael Fox, okay? So when I say I memorized Jim J. Bullock, it's because it's clear, perhaps, maybe it's not clear to you, it's clear his name is Jim, J-I-M, and then it was like, oh, there's a Jim J. Bullock in the actor's thing. You gotta change it, your name. I'm not changing my name, how about Jim? I guarantee that's what happened. Well, here I am going, hell yeah. I remember that. That begins your journey on memorizing. Think of something insanely simple. The host of Love Connection in the early 80s, Chuck Woolery. I remembered that he was the original host of Wheel of Fortune. Okay? 
I made it a point to remember that Chuck Woolery didn't just drop out of the fucking sky and start crushing it with fucking uh, Love Connection, which was a great show. If you never, if you, if you're too young out there to have checked out Love Connection, Joe is Love Connection on YouTube probably. Okay, Love Connection was unbelievable, where you have a, 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 some single people, and it's a daytime, it's like a show, it's like very unique, it's like, is it a game show, or is it a talk show? It's like, is this a drum instruction video, or is this a fucking disaster, you're probably asking yourself. It's a fucking drum instruction video, that pretends to be a disaster, wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a riddle.